In the previous episode, we restored a Hewlett Packard 200 CD wide range oscillator. And we restored it because I have something that I want to test. And it turns out that that's the perfect tool to do it. And what I want to test is I want to see how the inverters that we've been building out of vacuum tubes react at really high frequencies. Now I say really high frequencies, we're talking things under one megahertz. So really high frequencies by today's standards of, you know, multiple gigahertz is kind of mental and I can't really wrap my head around that. But under one megahertz, I can start to kind of grasp uh, how things are reacting. And I'm really curious how those inverters react from, you know, a really slow speed uh, down on the, the level of just hertz all the way up to multiple hundreds of kilohertz. So we're gonna get that oscillator set up and I have three tubes that I wanna check, so three different circuits. And I'm curious how they react compared to each other. So let's hop over to the bench and get started. Here are the three circuits that we're gonna to test today. We have three different tubes, but they're all set up in a very similar, just a inverting amplifier setup. Uh, the 60J8 is a triode, and we're not gonna test both of the triodes, we're only gonna test one of them. And, and we have a 4.7K resistor on the input to the grid, and then this input here is going to be uh, the output from our oscillator that we fixed up in the last episode. And then we have a 10K ohm resistor for our plate resistor, and then we're going to check the output with our oscilloscope directly off of the plate here. The 6AU6 we're going to test as well, and we'll set it up in pintode mode, uh, which essentially means that um, we tie the screen grid here to 24 volts with a 100 ohm resistor. Uh, and then the uh, suppressor grid gets tied to ground, and other than that, it's set up pretty much the same as the 6DJ8 over here. And then we have the 6EJ7. This is set up in kind of a special triode mode. And so what we're doing with the screen grid is instead of going to 24 volts, we tie it directly to the plate through a 100 ohm resistor. Uh, then other than that, it's pretty much identical to the 6AU6 here. So we'll check all three of these coming right off of the plate with the oscilloscope, and uh, hopefully we can see some interesting results. So let's get that set up and get started. So I've got my oscillator set up on the left here, and I've got my oscilloscope set up on the right here. And you can see the little yellow waveform that we're looking at on the oscilloscope right now. It's actually reading directly off of the output of the oscillator, which is this little yellow wire right here. And you can actually see that if I, if I tap that yellow wire, we get some noise on the, the signal that's coming into the oscilloscope. But uh, we just won't tap that while we're doing our testing. Now on the oscilloscope right now, the vertical divisions are set up at two volts per division. So you can see that our waveform goes from just about plus two volts to minus two volts from peak to peak. And it doesn't quite get to plus two volts, but it looks like it gets to minus two volts. And I'm not really sure why that is. I think that's probably just a unique uh, characteristic of this oscillator. Uh, now, I can actually change the amplitude of this waveform by adjusting the amplitude knob down here. And right now I've got it set to plus two to minus two, but I can actually really crank that up. I can crank it up to, uh, well, we have to readjust our scale here, but I can crank it all the way up to about 20, 24 volts, 25 volts peak to peak. So plus 25 to minus 25. Uh, we have no need to have it that high. That's just, that's gonna really, really push our vacuum tubes a little too hard, so. Uh, I can also run it a lot lower too, so I can also bring the amplitude way down to about plus, five, plus 0.5 volts to minus 0.5 volts. I can actually go a lot lower than that, but I have to really work with the trigger on here to get it set up right. And, and so really anything lower than that isn't going to help us anyways. So for now I'll leave it at plus 0.5 volts to minus 0.5 volts. Now on the breadboard here, you can see I've got my three vacuum tubes set up. I've got the 6AU6 on the left here, the 6DJ8 in the middle, and the 6EJ7 on the right. But I wanna start by looking at the 6DJ8 here. And so with our input signal going from 0.5 volts to minus 0.5 volts, we shouldn't be pulling the tube into cutoff or saturation at all. So when we look at the waveform of, of this tube, it should be pretty much the exact opposite of this waveform only amplified. So let's go ahead and turn that on and see what it looks like. Look at that, that's perfect. It's a perfect inversion of our little yellow input signal here. Now the scales are different, keep that in mind here. So this this scale, the, the purple scale here is set up at 10 volts per division. So you can see that we're going from just about plus 20 volts to about 
8 volts. So uh, 8 volts in the valleys and plus 20 volts on the peaks. And so that's a, a really nice inversion of our input signal that's coming in. Now what I really want to look at is how the tube reacts at saturation and cutoff. So in order to do that, we actually need to crank the amplitude up until we start to see the peaks and the valleys flatten out because that means that we can't make the output any higher or any lower. So let's, let's start cranking the amplitude up a little bit here. Oh, look at that. We're, we're starting to flatten out here and here. So I tell you what, we'll, we'll reset this to one volt per division. And you can see that we're moving from about plus one volt to minus 1.1 volt. And if we, we zoom in on this a little bit, you can actually see where we're hitting cutoff and saturation. It's where the waveform pretty much flattens out. So you can see uh, for the purple one, it's uh, remember it's 10 volts per division. So 10, 20, 24 volts. And, and that seems to be happening right about here. So a little bit past minus one volt, we're going into cutoff. So we're at 24 volts on our output and we're hitting saturation at just and just about one volt coming into the grid. So, and then saturation looks like it's about five volts. So if we crank the amplitude up even more, we should see these flats growing. Now this, the, the, the higher we crank the amplitude up, this angle here is going to rotate and become sharper and sharper and sharper. So that means that the curve that we see here should do the same thing. It should become sharper and sharper. So let's, let's see that in action here. Look at that. So you can see that this, our input angle here got really sharp and our inverted angle here is really sharp as well. And that's because we're, we're transitioning from minus one volt to plus one volt really, really quickly now. So that ends up making this look like a square wave. That's really neat. All right, but I'm gonna leave it at uh, about two volts peak to peak, our, our input signal here at about two volts peak to peak. So you can see that we go from just about plus two volts to just about minus two volts. That ensures that we have plenty of cutoff and we have plenty of saturation going on here. Um, and so now I'm, I'm really curious what happens when we start cranking the speed up. Uh, so let's do that. Let's rotate the big knob here and see what happens. All right, I had to change the source on the trigger because it wasn't triggering very well at the faster speeds. Uh, so you can see actually that we're running at about six six point oh four kilohertz. So our our oscillator here is doing doing awesome. And actually, if I if I adjust the scale here, you can see it, it doesn't really seem to have made any difference. We still have a great uh, inversion, and we're still hitting. Uh, cut off and saturation fine. So we can see that even up to six kilohertz we're getting exactly the operation that we're expecting out of the triode here. So, okay, well, let's drop this back down to 10 here and we'll move our scale up to times 1000. All right, so this is 10 kilohertz. And of course we expected that to be uh, no, no big deal at all. So um, let's just, let's go faster and faster and faster and see what starts to happen here. All right, there's uh, 30 kilohertz. So let's readjust the scale here. Well, no, that's really interesting. You see that when we're in saturation and we're pulling our output low and we're transitioning from a low output to a high output, this is taking a little bit longer than the transition from a high output to a low output. And we're seeing that at 30 kilohertz. So let's keep speeding it up and see what happens to this. We'll keep an eye on that. Wow, okay, so at 60 kilohertz, let's readjust it here. Now that's really interesting. You can see that our, our rise time is still taking a considerable amount of time at 60 kilohertz here, which means that the amount of time that we're spending in full cutoff, which is a, a high output, is getting shorter and shorter. Interesting. Wow, okay, well, let's go faster. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this back down to 10 and we'll go to times 10K. All right, well, I tell you what, we'll bring it all the way down to six. So this is 60 kilohertz. That's exactly what we were looking at. And as we go faster and faster, so this is really interesting. You can see we're at just about 140 kilohertz. And you can see that our, our rise time is taking so long 
that we don't actually make it to full cutoff and we don't get a proper full plus 24 volts on the output. We're only getting about a plus 21 volts on the output. And that's because it's taking so long to get up there that by the time it gets past about 20 volts, our input signal into the grid is coming up again. And so that starts to bring the tube back down into uh, saturation. That's really wild. All right, so let's, let's pick a speed limit. Let's say anything below 20 volts is unacceptable. So let's go a little faster and watch that peak come down. Oh, my trigger tends to go a little crazier there, but that that's actually right at 20 volts. So we'll call that our speed limit. Anything faster than that, and the rise time takes too long. And you can see that that's at about 220 kilohertz. So what happens if we just keep going faster? So let's, let's try that. I'm gonna play with the trigger a little bit to make sure that it keeps reading, and then we'll crank the dial all the way up to 60 and see what happens with our output waveform here. All right, there we go. That's, that's pretty interesting. So we're right at 615 kilohertz. And I tell you what, let's go ahead and bottom this thing out. Let's get it as fast as this thing can do. All right, so that's all the way out. We can see that we, we actually just cracked 700 kilohertz. So you can see that our, our scale right now is set up at 10 volts per division. So I'm actually gonna adjust that a little bit here. There we go, so that's five volts per division. So you can see we're at five and then that's about uh, seven volts, there's 10, um, and then that's maybe about 14. So our output signal here is just moving between about seven and 14 volts. Whereas at the slower speeds, we were getting about five to 24 volts. So you can see that the tube just can't react fast enough to keep up with the signal that's happening on our grid. And it's caused the peaks to just really come down tight. That's super interesting. Now keep in mind that this is at 24 volts. At a higher voltage, I fully expect it to perform differently because we have a higher voltage creating a stronger pull for the electrons coming off of the cathode. So we should have faster electron movement within the tube. Uh, but at 24 volts, we, we very clearly have a speed limit. And that speed limit is about uh, 220 kilohertz. Um, so just, we'll just round it down to about 200 kilohertz. There you go. And you can see at 10 volts per division, we're just barely above 20 volts. And if we want to actually make sure that we have enough time for the tube to go into full cutoff and get that full 24 volts out of there, well, we got to slow it way down right about in here. Uh, so about 80 kilohertz. Um, now, obviously, I'm not going to build anything that's going to run at 80 kilohertz of speed, but it's a little bit of knowledge now that we know about running our tubes at 24 volts. There's, there's definitely a limitation in speed for these vacuum tubes. Now, I say for these vacuum tubes, but we've only looked at the 6DJ8 so far. So let's take a look at the 6AU6 setup in pentode mode. We should see some different or interesting results here, hopefully. Well, you can see right off the bat, the waveform actually looks uh, pretty identical between the two. That's interesting. I wasn't, I wasn't quite expecting that. Uh, let's, but I tell you what, let's, let's bring the speed down a little bit here. Let's bring it down here to about uh, 50 kilohertz. And at 50 kilohertz, you can see that we're, we're spending a good amount of time in cutoff and a good amount of time in saturation. And let's start bringing the amplitude up here. Wow, look at that. Okay, so as we bring the amplitude up, oh, we're starting to see some really interesting stuff. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, first, we'll look at this. Um, okay, so you can see that our rise time is very, very slow compared to our fall time here. That's really interesting that our rise time and our fall time are so dramatically different at, at our higher amplitudes. But as we bring the amplitude up, look at that, we're starting to see the curve here come up again. And we actually saw this, we saw something very similar to this in one of the older previous episodes that I did, where we tested vacuum tubes with uh, just a little potentiometer. And, and we're, we're seeing that in action here. And wow, that's really interesting. So, I, I mean, we knew previously that there was a amplitude limit to the 6AU6 here, but uh, wow, that's cool.
Now this is, that's amazing, that's epic. I did not expect to see such a uh, interesting difference between rise time and fall time on this. All right, so let's, let's start going faster and faster and see what changes here. Oh, look at that. We're, we're almost starting to create what looks like a sawtooth wave. That's really interesting. That's, well, I mean, if we, if we bring it down to about 40, we bring the amplitude back down to, to where we were on the triode, it's actually really similar. And so if we, we crank the amplitude up, you can see we're getting that kind of sawtooth looking pattern. So let's, let's hop back to the triode and see if it, if it creates the same pattern. Yeah, wow, look at that. Okay, so the triode is creating almost the same pattern as well. Wow. Okay, all right, let's bring, let's bring the amplitude back down. Bring it back down to, to here, which is, uh, again, two volts peak to peak. Um, so let's, let's go back to the 6AU6 here. So the 6AU6 is that. The triode, the 6DJ8 is that. Those look almost the same. Let's look at the 6EJ7 here. Wow, it looks almost identical as well. They all look almost the same. That's interesting. Now let's crank the, the amplitude up on this one. Wow, look at that. You can see it's pretty much a perfect, it, it looks almost exactly like a sawtooth pattern. But you can see that as we crank the amplitude up, we don't get that issue that we saw with the 6AU6 where when the tube is in saturation, we start increasing a little bit down here. So if we, we slow that down, you can see it just goes flat. And that's because this is set up as a triode. So it's reacting like a triode. So, so that should actually look almost identical to the 6DJ8 and it does. Look at that. But if we look at the 6AU6, wow, look at that. Okay, that's really interesting as well. Man, all right. So we're, we're learning all sorts of cool stuff today. So let's start cranking. We'll bring, we'll bring the, the amplitude back down here. I know that I'm, I'm going back and forth a lot, but we'll crank the amplitude up and see at what point our output drops below 20 volts again. Right about there. Uh, and actually that's pretty much the exact same speed as the 6DJ8. So that's about 220 kilohertz. Um, and if, if we, as before, if we want to make sure that we stay in saturation and cutoff, we need to drop back down to about, yeah, about 80 kilohertz. So when it comes to speed, the 6DJ8 and the 6DJ7 are just about the same. Let's take a look at the 6AU6 again. Yeah, you can see it's about the same at 80 kilohertz as well. Let's go faster with it. See when it comes below 20 volts. Exact same place, pretty much. 220 kilohertz. Wow, that's... Super interesting. Okay, so we know that these three tubes all react pretty close to the same, but we knew that anyways because we, we tested a bunch of tubes in a previous episode. And I'll link that episode in, in the description below. But what I didn't expect is that I'm surprised that they're all reacting pretty much the exact same with respect to frequency as well. I'm surprised that they pretty much all drop below 20 volts at the exact same frequency. And, you know, the, having an oscillator and having an oscilloscope at your disposal is it's just indispensable. I'm so glad that I have these tools. And uh, as a matter of fact, the only thing that I would change is that I would like to someday uh, downgrade my oscilloscope here to an old uh, cathode ray tube uh, vacuum tube powered oscilloscope, just because I think those are really, really beautiful machines. Um, but it's, it's kind of hard to beat the functionality of a modern day oscilloscope. Uh, but at, at any rate, this was a, a really fun experiment. And I, I had a ton of fun just playing around with the giant, giant turn knob on here. It's got some, a great feel to it. Uh, and watching how the waveforms change and how the tubes react is just really interesting. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this experiment as much as I did. And uh, uh, next time we'll take a look at something totally different, although still vacuum tube related.